Liza and Danny behind the camera. Say hi. hi. <laughs> Say hi. Oh, I said hi. <laughs> um, I'm just here with Jinx, who is the uh, beautiful blue roan mare that I purchased recently. Um, she's about six years old, unstarted. Um, she's pretty nice to handle. She can be a little bit difficult to catch, but she's pretty light when you handle her. And she seen, she loaded well when I when I picked her up. She went on the truck pretty well. She was a bit cautious, but she didn't question me. And I gave her time, and she walked on. Just brought her out today. I haven't done anything with her other than, than let her put some weight on and hang around with the horses. Be horses out here at Mama Creek. And I thought I'd bring her out today. She needs her feet trimmed and um, I was going to put some fly stuff on her and just work with her in general and see because I've done absolutely nothing with her other than pick her up and put her in the paddock. So uh, first things first, I was just going to put some fly stuff on her, <laughs> which created a little bit of an explosion. So I just wanted to um, do a little video on approach and retreat and how to get her over here. It's not actually the mitt that's the problem. Um, and for a lot of them it's the visual and then the feeling is okay, it's the noise. So the noise that this makes when it touches her is really bothering her and on this um, offside she was really reactive and wanted to take my head off. So I've done a couple of minutes before, I thought oh hang on I should be videoing this. So she has calmed down quite a little bit, she reared up and backed away from me when I first um, first brought it out. So it was a little bit of a surprise, she's a pretty calm horse, it was a surprise that this was a bother for her. but. We'll, um, I'll just show you, you know, what I've been doing. So the first thing is just to make it, the first thing I had to do was get it to make a noise and get it a step towards it. As soon as she stepped towards it, I quit making the noise. So it taught her that if she comes to it, it quits rather than running away from it. So here I'm just going to touch her on the offside, which I've done three times now, but I'm touching her without making noise thus far. So now it's just a touch and then step back and reward and let her deal with that with a nice big breath big blowout and again that step towards me you might not have seen on the video but the release of pressure is now becoming a step towards me so here I'm going to go in she'll let me go in again this time I'm going to make a bit of noise with it hit a boundary where she was starting to get a bit jumpy so I step away and then ask her to step towards me for the release, good girl. And step towards the other trainer. <laughs> the filthy, filthy pig. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to keep stepping in here um, and rewarding her when she gives me some effort. see she's turning her head away from me so that tells me that I'm pushing her buttons but she's still pretty accepting of it I'm just gonna swap sides here and see if I can get the other side a little bit so just in a minute and a half or 30 seconds to a minute that I did before she came good really quickly because I did have a lot of retreat so if she starts to back away I go back to Come towards it for the release. Good girl. So one of the mistakes people make is when the horse backs away, they follow them with it. I do the other opposite, and I get the horse to follow it for the release. And that's that's if the horse is genuinely scared. If it's being a dick, I'll follow it until it quits. But if the horse is genuinely scared, I'll back away until they come to it and get the release themselves. So. Quick question, how do you tell if they're being a dick and whether they're genu genuinely squ uh, scared of it? Fantastic question. Um, with a horse that you know, you know that if you've done this before and, and this day that you brought them out, they won't have a bar of it, that's just being a dick. Um, but generally what will happen when they're being a dick is they'll be soft in their body, that is they'll not get all tense and tight and straight, they'll sort of just back away and you know, do what she's doing right now, which is just pulling on the lead rope and being quite, I want to get away and I'm a bit pissed off here. Um, you'll notice, and I'll do it here now, when I go in, she goes tight and still, and that's fear, all right? And they'll back away with their head up. So see how she's gone quite still in her body? And that to me tells me that she's scared, genuinely scared. And then if I reward, 
toward that. And there's a pig walking behind her too, which doesn't help. They get quiet around here. and I'm watching the weight bearing on that foot. So just explain what you meant there by the weight bearing for someone that might not understand. So just um, as you're so, at the hip, yep. you can actually see the hip lift. So if they were to rock their weight onto their right hind, you know yep. then they could lift their left hind to kick at you. Yep. But if they got their weight on their left hind, they can't pick it up. Exactly. They can. <laughs> well, they can, but they've got to shift they the weight. they generally got to shift the weight and you'll see yeah. it, which just gives you time from here to step straight back. And they can't, she couldn't get me here. Um, mm -hmm. And the other thing is, if I do step back this way, as I pull a lead rope, she bends and a hind quarter is going to go away from yeah. me. So, that's so you always, always keep that lead rope at a length that you can control the head. Yeah, pull her okay. around so that she bend, you bend the bum away from you always. So, sorry to interrupt your training video. No, that's good. Good question. So I'm still quite quiet with this at the moment. I'm getting her used to the fact that the, the mitt actually feels okay. And the other thing they learn, the stallion that we started down in um, Pabulum, that beautiful Roy, big guy, black guy, he was unhandled and he had um, buffalo fly all over him. And I came in with a mitt and after about... 30 seconds of touching him a couple of times with the mitt, he went, oh wait, this is good. Because <laughs> the flies stopped biting them straight away. So they actually will learn that the mitt, and I don't like to use poisons, but sometimes, you know, out here, we're not here all the time, so we can't put stuff on them all the time. But um, they, they learn that the mitt is a really good thing because it gets those flies. And she was swishing and carrying on a whole lot before. Um, so this will help her a lot. Um, also, I figured, um, good girl, I'll just do these legs quietly. You can see the flies are biting her legs there. Um, also, I went to pick up a feet. She hasn't had a feet done by the, the way she responded to me. She's not had a feet done ever. not a bad response and I'm gonna now put the move the noise into the mitt once I get this done she's also got some rain school happening on those back legs and not rain school mud fever happening on those back legs which means I'm gonna have to treat that as well and that stuff hurts so I'm gonna just go in now keep her eye on me make some noise good girl step it towards me for the reward good girl good girl that's a mule calling out for the uninitiated <laughs> it's a mule winnie a bray bray winnie So that's pretty good now. That's she's come good. That's nice response now. She's still turning her face away from me a little bit, but she's pretty accepting with still feet there. I'm pretty happy with that for a first little training session on something that she was pretty scared of. I'll see if I can get her face here. Nope. All right. So when they do that, I'm going to come up behind her with approach and retreat. I'll just um, 
then you'll just swap sides. Yeah. All right. So a lot of horses really accepting of you going. Yep. Yeah. Just stop it and start again.